When I came across this book for the first time, The Art of War, I was a bit skeptical. Why would anyone read this book in the 21st century? I'm not in a state of war, neither most of the world. Even if I was, this book is probably for generals and military leaders. As I was reading through the pages of the book, I came across sentences such as If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not to fear the results of a hundred battles. It sounded a bit funny back then, because I did not have any enemies, neither I was trying to get anyone. But as I pondered more about the ideas that this book presented, I came to a realization that life is a warfare. I mean, not in the traditional meaning where you have to shoot your enemies, but you have to deal with similar problems, such as when you get into an argument or a conflict with a friend or relative. Or take another example. If you're running a business, you will undoubtedly have competitors who will work their ass off just to kick you out. It's like modern day warfare. When diapers.com clashed with Amazon, guess what Amazon did? First, they offered to buy diapers.com, but they refused. So Amazon started selling diapers at a loss until diapers.com would run out of cash and file for bankruptcy. Bezos even famously said that Amazon will drive diaper prices to zero if they don't sell or end up selling to their competitors. Even if you're just an employee, you're fighting with your colleagues for that promotion. People don't get randomly picked to be managers or heads of departments. So the strategies that Sun Tzu talks about in The Art of War are still relevant to this day. Avoid what is strong and strike what is weak. A lot of people inspired by their favorite YouTubers start a YouTube channel, try their best to upload as much as they can, stay consistent, improve the quality of their videos, but still end up failing and don't understand why. There are literally a million channels that play Minecraft, for example. There are people who play this game far better than you. Why would you start a YouTube channel in such a competitive niche? You are competing with people who play this game non-stop and are way better than you. Why would anyone watch you when they can watch a far more skilled player? Especially when there are no barriers to entry. Let me ask you this. What does it take to make Minecraft videos? A computer, a mic and internet connection, which pretty much everyone can get these days. Now, compare that to Mr. Beast's videos. How many people can put a hundred million Orbeez in their friend's backyard, or spend 50 hours in a solitary confinement, or plant 20 million trees just to make a 10 or 15 minute video? You can't be getting into a crowded niche and doing the exact same thing but expecting different results. I made the exact same mistake when starting this channel. I wanted to share my ideas and opinions with the world, and I started doing animated book reviews, using a software that every other YouTuber used back then. And guess what? I didn't see much progress. People found my videos very similar to other channels. There wasn't a good reason for them to watch my content or subscribe. It was a competitive space. I knew that if I wanted to grow this channel, I can't be doing what everyone else does. I should do what most people can't do. I should do something that others will find difficult to replicate. So instead of blaming YouTube, I hired an amazing team of graphic designers who knew how to make these beautiful animations, and not everyone can easily replicate them, because it's not cheap to say the least. And instead of reviewing just books like everyone else did, I decided to also share my experience in real estate and the stock market, since I've been an investor for years by then. And guess what? More and more people started watching my content. Of course, not every video I post gets a lot of views, but the channel is far bigger now than it was back then with just 2000 subscribers. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. So here is why a lot of people fail. You are overweight and you come across a motivational video here on YouTube and suddenly you are fired up, 
you're ready to take on the world. You promise yourself to jog every morning, reduce the number of calories you consume daily, cut back on sweets, never have another cheeseburger again, and work out every day for at least two hours. Seems like a brilliant plan to get in shape. But here's what happens in reality. You do it once, maybe twice, and then on the third day, you decide to skip the gym because you're exhausted. And then in a few days, you're back to your unhealthy lifestyle. It's not that there is something fundamentally wrong with you, but when you try to take multiple battles at the same time, you simply don't have the willpower to fight them all. It doesn't matter how talented are you, your resources are limited. Start first with cutting back on sugar, for example. Once you make that part of your lifestyle, then move to the next important thing, which might be jogging. Once you get used to that, start going to the gym. If you do not choose your battles wisely, you will be defeated. I don't care who you are, but you can't be a basketball star, a successful politician, and a singer all at the same time. You simply won't have the time to be good at all of them. You're either going to train at the pitch all day long every day to be the best in the world at throwing the ball into the ring, or learn how to code and build a technology that will solve a complex problem. That's why, if you take a look at any successful person, every one of them is known for just one thing. Bezos for building Amazon, Jay-Z for rapping, or LeBron James for playing basketball. If you know your enemy and know yourself, you will always be victorious. So the other day, I had an argument with a friend who was telling me how he has invested in the stock market but lost his money. That's why he is never going to invest in the stock market again. He tried to convince me that the stock market is more like gambling. Of course, it is like gambling if you do not know what you are doing. Before you even put a dime in the stock market, you should have spent months studying the market, understanding how the market works, why some stocks rise and others fall, why some companies perform better than others. You can't just invest in a company because you heard about it in the news and be disappointed when it falls the next day. Everything is like gambling if you do not prepare for it. Sanzu is basically saying that if you know who you're dealing with or what you're dealing with, you're not going to lose. Imagine getting into a fight with a martial art fighter. You will get your ass kicked. But if you study your enemy, find out his weaknesses, train harder than him, you stand a pretty good chance to win. The book is filled with such concepts. Of course, we can't discuss all of them, otherwise this video will have to be an hour long. But it's just fascinating that the strategies that worked thousands of years ago are still relevant until today. Seems like humanity at its core hasn't changed much since then. And now it's your turn. What's your favorite lesson out of this book? I'm really curious to know what you think about this book. But before you do that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching. And until next time.